Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. This is a review of the Nikon 50mm 1.2 AIS Prime Lens. It was introduced back in 1980 or thereabout, and it has hence been with us for around 40 years. It is still in production today, and it is the fastest lens made by Nikon. It is rumored to be the sharpest Nikon 50mm lens at f2, and if you want a copy, you can still order one with B&H for around $700, or you can try your luck at eBay or Amazon. Typically, a mint copy is around $400 US dollar, whereas a beaten up copy like mine is $260 or thereabout. It is a very specialized tool, an AIS lens, so there's no autofocus, there's no CPU contacts. It is basically just glass and metal and nothing else. No electronics, no vibration reduction, nothing that will assist you <laughs> taking your pictures. It is just really good glass and metal. Other reviews will tell you that on the plus side, this lens has optical and mechanical quality that is probably some of the best Nikon has ever made. It's built like a tank, super sharp, super fast, has a very, very thin depth of field, uh, wide open, that gives you some dreamy pictures. It is a simple construction, so the light does not travel through too much glass, and the nine-bladed diaphragm gives an give some sun stars with 18 points, which some absolutely love. On the more negative side, it is quite expensive if you should choose to buy a new copy. And as I mentioned in the beginning, there's no electronics in this lens, it is just glass. The minimal focus distance is 50 centimeters, which I find to be too much. So I typically use extension tubes. And vignetting occurs when you shoot, especially wide open, but I think in post you can quickly counter that, should you wish so. So if we start out by testing the lens at varying apertures towards itself, you can see here to the left I have f1.2 and to the right I have 2.0. And no doubt about that at 1.2 it is not as sharp as it is at 2.0. If we go to the top left corner, you see exactly the same, much sharper and more contrasty over here. The Euro Note sign, one of my favorites, much clearer. On the right hand side at f2 and if we can find the number here there it is sharper again bottom right same picture top right it is simply sharper at f2 what surprised me though was to see that if we continue and com continue upwards in f-stop numbers closing down the aperture you will see to the left now i had f2 to the right i have f5.6 and here it becomes even sharper again. So at 5.6, I would claim I can even see it says New York here. But also if you look at the vertical lines in the pillars here, they're much sharper at 5.6. And you will see this in the number here. You will see it in the euro sign. I mean, all over the place, top left here, it is sharper. So from 2 to 5.6, a noticeable increase in sharpness. And then if I continue upwards at if 5.6 here to the left and if 8 to the right, I would say it looks like we have just passed the point of where the lens does not get any sharper because it looks very similar to me. If we go down here to the Euro note, I would even say maybe the 5.6 looks a little bit sharper and more contrasty than at 8. Let's try it up left. Yeah, I would say that's a draw. Bottom right, I would say that's a draw as well. So it seems like at 5.6 we get the best out of this lens, or thereabout. If we go to f8, then uh, we're stepping a little bit backwards. And of course, both of these are sharper than, than the fully open at f1.2. So here, comparing to the f1.4 lens to the right, I have uh, both of these now shooting at f2. And I was actually surprised to see that the 1.4 lens, which is less than half the cost, although it includes both autofocus and CPU contacts, actually is doing a very, very good job at competing with this. I would say this is a draw, if you ask me. Maybe I would even say the 1.4 here is sharper and more contrasty than the lens we're testing here today. Same here, I would say 1.4 looks sharper more contrasty let's go back to the center here yeah maybe that's a draw broaden right i would say they're close i'm surprised to see that the 1.4 
actually does such a good job in combination in competition with this uh, classic lens. If we then try at f4, once again I have the 1.2 lens to the left, 1.4 lens to the right, and I would say it's very very close here in terms of sharpness. Let's go to yeah, actually it actually looks to me like the 1.4 here to the right is slightly sharper. Again, so same picture here. What about the number here? Yeah, it looks like it's sharper. Mind you, these are both sharp at f4. The 1.2 to the left, 1.4 to the right. So in general, I'm surprised to see how well the 1.4 lens actually does in competition with this, this 40 year old lens construction. Yeah, down, down here, look, you can almost see it says 83. You can't do that on the on the 1.2 here to the left. So very impressive uh, work here by the, the 1.4. So if we look at some bokeh, to so the left I have the 1.2, to the right the 1.4 as usual. And both of these are now shooting wide open. And you can see the 1.2 looks a little bit more oval whereas the 1.4 is more round and I think it's fair to compare 1.2 with 1.4 here because they're both shooting wide open meaning that the blades are completely out of the way and in this case I would say fully open I actually like the 1.4 more than I do the 1.2 because the bokeh here it looks more round and pleasing. If we then compare f2 with f2 again same lens 1.2 to the left 1.4 to the right you can see that because the nine blades with the 1.2 you get a more you get more edges simply you get more corners with the 1.2 than you go with the 1.4 but in terms of being pleasing to look at i'm not so sure that the 1.2 is so much better this is very much personal preference but you can see over here seven blades over here nine blades so what you like i will leave that to to you to decide obviously and maybe you should look at it like this but i would say i'm not so sure that the 1.2 even though it has more blades uh, is the clear winner here i would say in this case the bokeh here to the right to my eye look more pleasing to look at So finally, in the test here, here we have the iPhone on the shelf test, where I have uh, to the left the 1.2, to the right the 1.4. And as you can see, the 1.4 has fewer points in the Sunstar, but I think both of them are beautiful. And here in the real life example, this is with the 1.2 lens. You can see that a Sunstar can really make a difference in an otherwise uh, ordinary picture. So towards the end of this review, I just wanted to show you some examples of pictures I've taken with this lens. I think this is perhaps the most important part. What, what does the people who actually shoot with this, this lens tell you? Because the technical test is, you know, I think that has to be part of a review. But maybe more importantly, how does the lens work in real life? And as you can see here, together with the Nikon D700, most of these pictures I'm showing you here today are shot with the Nikon D700. It really does a good job. And you can see here how the clouds, they stand out. You can see how yeah, the color rendition. I am a Nikon fanboy when it comes to color rendition. And I think it's a bit subjective what you like and what you don't like. So I don't include it in my, in my reviews because I think it's difficult to measure. And there's a lot of, of personal preference uh, baked into that. I, I think Nikon's color rendition, speaking for myself here, is absolutely amazing. Again, these clouds that I'm showing you here, I think they really stand out nicely. The sun star that you saw previously, we just talked about color rendition. I mean, in my mind, this, this uh, speaks for itself. If you go to black and white, you can see all the details and how the background is almost not there. Again here, the setting sun has caught these uh, plants and you can see how precisely the, the edges here are shown here, right? amazing and the the bokeh i criticize the bokeh in the technical test i don't think there's anything wrong with the bokeh here same goes for the bokeh here looks nice again very sharp picture here 
just some clouds also looks nice and look here the droplets here how many details there are and here an example where where the background blur really comes into play because you can almost place the focal plane in parallel with this flower here and then the background becomes really blurred this in my mind of the cat's eye here is an example of a picture you can almost only do with 1.2 or at least a, a lens with the ability to open that wide because you can see here the only thing that's sharp is the cat's eye and the rest is blurred this gives a special feel to the picture and i think that's what many report about shooting this lens that it it, it does the most beautiful work when it's fully open even though it may not be as sharp as one could wish for in the corners again here i'm amazed by the the sharpness that you see here in, in the picture notice how the background is completely blurred again here look at the details look at how you can almost see how shallow the depth of field here is and again here look at the right hand side here this is perhaps one of the best examples of what a 1.2 lens can do and that is because the background is not just blurred it's completely gone it's simply washed out to being just one big green surface so to speak and you can also see here when you look at the lens here or sorry the the flower here you know it is many centimeters deep this flower and still just from one point on the flower to another it goes from tack sharp to completely bright simply amazing if you ask me same here look at the details in the droplets here the reflection amazing lens so i hope these pictures have spoken for themselves even though i gave them some words to go along so what to make of all this well when i started out making this video it was with the thinking that this would be a tribute to the 1.2 lens and its amazing optical and mechanical qualities however using the 1.4 as a reference point just to show you how great the 1.2 is i was surprised to find how close to the 1.2 the 1.4 actually is and if you factor in the fact that the price point for the 1.4 is less than half for the 1.2 that you get autofocus and you get cpu contacts i cannot from a rational point of view recommend the 1.2 over the 1.4 i can from an emotional point of view because there is something about seeing that front glass that massive front glass or feeling the focus ring the way it works it's absolutely amazing or having that extra half stop of light in a low light situation or that tiny 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 extra level of uh, bokeh and background blur uh, or more shallow depth of field of course there is that but if you go actually and do your your calculations you will see that 1.4 and 1.2 are actually not that far apart and hence again from a rational point of view if you ask me if you should go for the 1.2 or the 1.4 i would say go for the 1.4 afd or even look to the newer g lenses i think your money is much better spent there but again from a more emotional point of view i uh, reach the opposite conclusion so as you can hear i'm very torn here i will leave it up to you of course as always but this is my thinking after testing these two lenses side by side for a few days now thank you for watching as always happy shooting take care bye bye